Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to teach you how to successfully install the latest version of Apache Kafka on Windows. I will also show you how to resolve any common problems or errors that might come up step by step. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Welcome to my channel, Technicio. To install Kafka, the first thing we need to do is download the latest version of Apache Kafka. For that, we'll open a browser and search for Apache Kafka. From the search results, we'll open the official Apache Kafka website. Here you can see its features and details. In the top right corner, you'll find the download option. Clicking on it will show us all the available Kafka versions. We want the latest version, which is 4.1.0. So, I'll download the binary file since I need Kafka for Windows. Clicking the link will start the download. While the file is downloading, let me check the quick start guide on the website. Here you'll find an introduction video for Kafka, and below it there's a guide. The first step in the guide is to download and extract the file. In the second step, there's a very important note right at the beginning. It says that your system must have Java 17 Plus installed to run Kafka. Therefore, before installing Kafka, I will install Java 17 Plus. But first, let me check if Java is already installed on my system. To do that, I'll open Command Prompt and run the command Java version. If Java is not installed on your system, you will see a message like this. If it is installed, the version will be displayed. However, we need Java 17 Plus, so I'll simply search for Java 17 Download. On Oracle's official website, we can find Java 17 Plus versions like 17.0.12. I'll download the latest version for Windows 64-bit. Once the download is complete, I'll open it and proceed with the installation. If we now open Command Prompt again and check with the java-version command, you'll see that my system now recognizes the command and the Java version details are displayed. You can see that Java is installed on my system and the version is 17 plus. Now, let's move forward and install Kafka. Our Kafka zip file has been downloaded, so we'll open the folder and extract this zip file. After the extraction is complete, I'll rename this folder simply to Kafka to make it easier for us. Then I'll cut this folder and paste it into the C drive. This is because the folder directory for CMD commands should be short. If it's too long, the CMD command might not accept it and throw an error. That's why I've pasted the Kafka folder in the C drive. If you open this folder, you'll see a bin folder. Inside it, you'll find .esh files, which are for Linux-based systems. There's also a Windows folder here, which contains the batch files necessary to run Kafka on Windows. After the bin folder, we have the config folder, which contains properties files that we will reconfigure later. Below these, you'll also find libs, licenses, and site docs folders. Before running Kafka, we need to make some changes to the environment variables. For that, I'll go to PC Properties, then to Advanced System Settings. Here we'll find the Environment Variables option. Clicking on it will show us the system variables. We need to add the path to the bin folder to the path variable. Here you can either copy the path and add a new path, but I'll click Browse and choose the bin folder from the Kafka folder. This is the method I prefer. After adding the path, I'll click OK and close the settings. Now I will configure and run Kafka. I have written down some steps in a notepad that we need to follow to run Kafka without any errors. The first step is to change the log directory path. For that, I'll go into the config folder and edit the server.properties file. Scrolling down, we'll find the log basics section with the logs directory path. By default, it's set to the temp folder but I want all logs to be created within the Kafka folder itself. So first, I'll copy the Kafka folder path. Then, in the logs basics section, I'll erase the TMP path and paste my Kafka folder path here. But remember one important thing. You must write the backslashes as forward slashes, otherwise it won't work correctly. Then, save the file and close it. The second step is to generate a cluster UUID from the command prompt. For that, we need to give the CMD the Kafka folder directory. First, I'll run CMD from the Kafka folder path so that the folder path is already set in CMD. Now I'll copy the command from the notepad and paste it into CMD. You will get all these commands in the description. As soon as I run the command, a cluster ID will be generated. I'll copy this ID and paste it into my notepad because this ID will be used in the next command.
The next step is to format the log directories. For that, I'll paste this generated cluster ID into the command to complete it. Now I'll copy this command from here and paste it into CMD. Pressing enter will make Kafka format the directory. Up to this point, all steps have been completed properly without any errors. The last step is to start the Kafka server. For that, I'll open Notepad and paste the final server starting command into CMD. As soon as I press enter, I get an error showing that WMIC is not recognized. This means CMD could not find WMIC on my system. WMIC is a command line utility feature that is not installed by default in Windows 11. We have to install it ourselves. So for that, we'll go to Settings, then to System Settings, and choose Optional Features. Clicking on View Features will open a new window showing a list of added features. If I search for WMIC in the added features, I get a No Features Found message, meaning WMIC is not installed on my system. So I'll click on See Available Features and search for WMIC here. I'll find the WMIC feature, whose full form is Windows Management Instrumentation Command Line Utility. I'll install this feature, and it might take some time. After the feature is installed, I'll close the settings. Now, I will restart CMD. I don't need to run the previous commands again because they are saved in the logs, so I'll just run the command to start the Kafka server. As soon as I run the server start command, the Kafka server will start without any errors and we'll see a long message ending with Kafka server started. This means we can now create topics and work on Kafka. For the latest version of Kafka, you don't need to run Zookeeper separately because it runs without Zookeeper. So by following these step-by-step -step instructions, you can install Kafka on your system without any errors. In my next video, I will tell you about a new recovery tool and give you my honest review. So don't miss my next video and please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Technicio, and hit the bell icon so that you'll never miss an update from our channel. Together, let's end tech tantrums. Thank you.